Hello, y'all. You're going to have to kind of give me a little grace here today. This video is not as pulled together as I normally do, but it's a little loud and kind of crazy in my house this morning. And so I just was like, you know what? I've been wanting to film this video. I've had this box of stuff, this stuff that I got uh, for this homeschool haul. I keep putting it off because I can't seem to catch a quiet moment. So I asked my husband to bring, carry this big honking box out here for me to my office so I could just film this out here. It's kind of one of those things where I'm like, I can keep making excuses and come up with all kinds of reasons why I like, oh, I don't have my right setup right now, but we're just gonna do it, okay? So thank you for your patience and your grace in my you know, less than professional video. But I wanted to share with you guys a little homeschool haul because I've gotten some really fun stuff. Uh, you know, sort of springtime is one of my favorite like homeschool shopping times as I start to think about what I want to do with my kids over the, you know, quote unquote summer, even though we pretty much year round homeschool. So we don't really have like a traditional summer break. Um, and then in the next year, I'm already starting to think about like what special units we're going to do and stuff like that. So I like to kind of pick up a few things. And so that's what I wanted to share with you today. Everything will be linked down below for you in the description box. Almost everything I think in this haul is from Amazon, but I saw these and I just thought those are absolutely darling. So they have a ton of variations of these composition notebooks that now they are paper, right? Because um, they don't have like the hard cover of a composition notebook. It's more of a paper cover, but I think I actually kind of like that better, which is wild. But these are college ruled. I do think they have what I was gonna say wild. I do think they have wide ruled as well, but I got all of mine in college ruled. They had so many. I really just had to like narrow it down and pick a few and like calm myself down because I love them so much. Like the wildflowers, this pretty one that's absolutely gorgeous. And then I got this little rabbit one for one of my kids that I know they're gonna absolutely love. So it's printed, so this binding isn't real. It's printed, if that makes sense. But I just thought these were absolutely adorable. Love these, so many purposes for these for nature notebooks or whatever. I've linked these, I've linked everything down below, but also in my Amazon shop, I have really been working hard to organize that and sort it and make it a really great resource for you guys to be able to find things for different units um, and just, you know, resources like building up a resource library. I'm working on like an elections and government unit for my kids since this is an election year. I want to go through that again. So I'm putting all my favorite resources for that in there. So definitely check that out. I have my other Amazon storefront that I share like home stuff and clothing and baking, but this one is strictly homeschool. So that's the only thing you'll find in that storefront. The next book that I picked up is this Our Planet Earth. Uh, if you are somewhat new to my content, then you won't know this, but if you've been here for a long time, you'll know I'm a huge fan of resource books like this that I often just leave out for my kids to pick up and read and flip through, but also because when I'm building units, when we are, when my kids are showing interest in something and we wanna dive a little deeper, I love having a home library. If you don't have the space for that, totally fine. You don't, you don't have to do that. You can just go to the regular library, but having eight children and homeschooling for as long as I have and how much more homeschooling I have to go, I'm all about um, the home resource library. So anyways, this one is our planet earth. I love flipping through these, by the way. It's not just the kids. Sometimes I just love sitting down and flipping through these. They have a whole series. I also got the human body one. We're gonna be doing a new human body unit. It's been quite a while since we've done human body and because we kind of do things like in groups and rotations, it's about time for a human body unit again in this house. So I'm very excited about building that again. So I got this book um, and like I said, you can see on the back here that they have animal space, science, inventions, world history, art and architecture, the planet earth, all of that cool stuff. So I like these books are great resource books and they're not terribly expensive, which is also what I like. They're not like, out of this world insanely expensive, which some books can be. Now, I also am a nature lover. I have a few nature loving children, insects, bugs, plants, and all the things. And when you combine that with like a really beautiful book, I'm on board and that is what this is. So this is the secret world of plants, tales of more than 100 remarkable flowers, trees, and seeds. I just thought that this looked so interesting. And because the illustrations are kind of, I hate to say basic, but kind of, they're, they're illustrations that would be great for um, 
allowing children to like copy and and sort of use for inspiration doing like nature notebooking time and stuff like that uh i don't know i just really really liked this book i thought this looked really cool and it also has like gold gilding on the outside here which just adds to the beauty of the whole book okay quaking aspen horse tail dog rose plant defenses I love learning about stuff like this. I find it so fascinating all the ways that plants protect themselves. Speaking of like catnip, for example, that you're like, why is there a plant out there that makes cats basically act like they're high? It's a defense mechanism for the plant. So the cat gets confused and can't find the plant again. <laughs> um, this again for art time, nature time. I just, I, I loved this. So this is the insect artist, how to observe, draw, and paint butterflies, bees, and more. Again, these are books that, you know, you kind of get to look through, but uh, because you're buying them on Amazon, you don't get to like really, really look through them. I am going to try some of these myself, but they, they teach you, you know, sort of step by step how to draw different butterflies and paint them, uh, birds, insects, or not birds, insects, butterflies, and bees. And I think this will be a really great, our own version of art. We don't always like, I don't buy a bunch of curriculums for stuff like that. Like this is art for us. And uh, especially if you've got insect lovers, this is great. So I'm excited about that one. I'm excited about all of them. I should stop just saying that. I did pick up another pack of colored pencils because these were on super sale and we use colored pencils all the time. So anytime I can find good colored pencils for a decent price, I grab them and Amazon Austin often has flash sales. Now this is another, so there's an original and the second one, another logic workbook for gritty kids ages eight to 12. I got this for my boys. Um, Y'all know that I love teaching logic and uh, I have like a logic course that I've done with a couple of my kids. And so I didn't want that for them. Like they're not ready for like a full course, but I thought I would try the workbook. So I will keep you posted. There's over 200 activities in here. Um, and it's just, again, getting those, getting the wheels turning, getting them greased, getting their little brains going, which is always fun. Activities like that, not at all a waste of time. I got these to add to our sensory bins. Uh, we have sensory bins that the kids, I mean, honestly, all of my kids play with them and use them. So here and there, I like to add new things to them. So I recently added, I don't think I brought those out here. I recently added like almost like beach toys, but they are dinosaur like shapes of bones and stuff. So they take like the kinetic sand and then make like dinosaur bones and shapes or whatever. And so these are glow in the dark rocks, basically they're glow in the dark rocks. So I thought that I would add those to the sensory bin. So I know my kids will love that. And I picked up these, hold on, it's going to be crinkly. One moment, please, while I pull up your account. Um, I've been eyeing these for a while because my kids are collectors. They make a bigger size. This is like the little kid size, and they make a bigger, like, teen size, they call it. But I don't want my kids collecting that much, so I'm good with the small ones. But my kids love to, on our property... Uh, I was cleaning out something in my boy's closet the other day, and I found a bag of bones. There's a skull. They've got feathers, <laughs> snake skins. My one daughter has a collection of snake skins. All that they find on our property. My other son has a metal detector, and he finds all kinds of things. Um, and sometimes it's just rocks. All the time, I'm throwing away rocks and pieces of glass. They love to find pieces of glass. There's like old broken glass from like milk crates and stuff up by the front where the old house used to be. So they just, they love to find things like that and they save them. But I like these. These are technically for like collecting shells on the beach, which you can totally do. But for my kids collecting crap in the yard, where then when they do pick up that rock or that piece of glass, they put it in here and the dirt falls through it before they come carrying all that stuff. So I thought these would be good. I mean, we don't like go to the park and do nature notebooking time anymore because now that we live on this little farm here, it's like going to the park, just go walk in the woods. It's the same experience. <laughs> so uh, these are for us to basically use at home, but these would be great to add into like a nature notebooking backpack or on your next beach trip. They zip for the kiddos to keep all their stuffas in. They're just fun, you know? I don't know about y'all, but I grew up going to the beaches of like South Georgia and Florida, North Florida, 
we were always looking for shark's teeth. That's what we were always collecting was shark's teeth. Okay. Now I'm also working on some literary units, uh, my own version, which I may or may not put in the shop. Just depends on like what I think of them when they're all said and done. Uh, maybe I'll, at some point I need to come up with like a list of people who would like to test things where when I create something that would be like a unit <clears throat> or something like that, I'm currently working on my own etiquette unit. I'm going to teach a summer etiquette for my nieces and nephews, as well as my own kids are going to participate as well. And I'm going to turn that into uh, like a, a unit. And I was going to put that in the shop as well, but I probably need to like get a list of people who would want to test some things so that I can work out any kinks in that before I put it up in the shop for sale, if you will. But anyways, so the secret garden and Anne of green Gables, I love beautiful books and I have both of, uh, I have both of these books that are like beat up, falling apart and they're not, they're just, I, they're not, they're not the prettiest. They're just like old little by little. I try to replace some of those books where I can with nicer versions that are a little, um, prettier to look at like these. Cause that's those little things that make me happy and the little things that make me want to pick up a book. And so I just really liked these. These are good size. Like they're good to hold in your hand and be able to read like this when you're reading aloud. You know, sometimes if the book is too big, it can be a little bit obnoxious. They're nice and light, but sturdy. So I thought these were really beautiful. They have a whole series of these, but like I said, I got the secret garden and Anne of green Gables. Oh boy. I have not actually opened this whole thing yet. So let's just do it together. Shall we? We shall. They, this is a pack of 20 human body posters. I think it's 20. Nine, no, 16. I'm so sorry. This is a pack of 16 human body posters. And I'm pretty jazzed about these because they are serious business. They're double-sided. So you have like the skeletal system, the muscular system. Somehow I think they sent me two of the same one. Oh, well, we'll double check and make sure we got all the ones we're supposed to have. <laughs> the digestive system, the respiratory system, the nervous system, the endocrine system, phatic system, the circulatory system. That's so weird. It's like I got double of some things. I'll give some of these to my sister because I got doubles of the digestive. Weird. Weird. Maybe I was supposed to be doubles. I don't know, but I got doubles of some of these. I will not, I'm not even going to show this one. There's female and male reproductive. I'm not going to show this on YouTube. Okay. Just not going to show it on YouTube. Y'all know what it looks like somewhat sort of, ah, and they sent me two of those. Okay. Maybe it's supposed to be like eight and then you get double. I'll pass them on to my sister. Spinal and cranial nerves, ligaments of the joints, anatomy of the brain, as well as anatomy of the heart. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. Dermatomes. I'm not going to lie. I don't know what that is. Uh, anatomy of injuries, uh, anatomies, <laughs> anatomy and injuries of the hip. This is for those of us who are getting older. Yes. Anatomy of the spine and disorders of the spine. Okay. Well, I'm going to double check that listing and see if I was supposed to get double because they definitely sent me double of, not all of them though, just some of them, which is kind of odd. I'll pass along what I don't need to my sister. There you go, Ashley, love you so much. Have a poster of male anatomy. National Geographic, this is the photo arc insects, butterflies, bees, and kindred creatures. Again, I just love books like this and my little ones, woo, that's creepy. My little ones love books like this. Woohoo! you see them so up close. Ooh, look at his eyes. It's the only warmth he ever had. That's exactly what that spider looks like. I don't pay extra for the warmth, you know. Well, you should. It's the only warmth he ever had. If you know that movie, you're my people. Okay? Insect book, great. Um, I got some, you're probably like, wait, what? This Gorilla Spray adhesive? I got that because I also got something I have been wanting for a really long time, and so I sort of got it for my kids, but also myself. This is a flower press art kit, basically. Um, 
you have all these little toolsies. I've been doing some research about like best practices and stuff for doing this. Here's like your little cardboard smooshing pieces. And then you've got ah paper, the special paper, and then the wood pieces. That's what the top of it looks like. And then the bottom is just a plain piece of wood, obviously, because you can't see it, it's on the bottom. All right, so then you put it together like this, and then you've got it to smush down. Got all your pieces here as well. To smush down and press flowers. And then the glue is to adhere them to pages in a notebook onto pictures that we might frame. I have some ideas of some things I wanna do with them, but I would like to press some flowers and leaves and things uh, from the, some of the stuff that I'm growing, some of the different variations of flowers and stuff that I'm growing, um, especially the ones that are like very sentimental. My, um, I call them my guimau roses, my roses for my one grandma. Uh, so I've got like plants like that that are sentiment, sentimental and special to me. So I want some ways to preserve uh, some of the flowers and such from them. So that is what this kit is for. So I'm going to get that set up and hopefully I've got a few kids who will be super into it. I'm very excited about that. So if any of you are like experts or knowledgeable about the whole like flower pressing, drying flower stuff, let me know, share your information. This is not necessarily homeschool, but it's in the same box. So I'm going to show you because here we are. This is the no grid survival projects, how to produce everything you need on your own property. I thought this was, I have a few like survival books, um, just more like having uh, an emergency, like what I call like practical preparedness. But this is a book of all of these different projects that you can do. And I thought that some of this could be really good for my boys, um, like how to use a ham radio in a blackout. But some of the stuff uh, that they can, how to make your own wind turbine, I don't know that I'm gonna be having them do that but how to charge your phone when there's no electricity. And it tells you at the top, like if it's an easy or difficult thing, the step-by-step -step process, the materials that you need, how to get power out of dead batteries, just like cool stuff to know if you like really need it in an emergency, but also some good projects and things, how to build a water heater. Man, I could have used that. Our water heater was out for two weeks and I was boiling water on the stove and pouring it into a bathtub and like crying just to take a bath. I wasn't really crying, but I was like, I don't know how people did this. This is why they only bathe like once a year. Uh, and by the way, I've like lived in the Congo for a month and bathed in literally in a tiny bucket where we warmed water with the hot pot, like the hot water pot. And that was the only warm water I had. And I just did it to try to get the shampoo out of my hair. Anyways, so I'm not that prissy, but just after two weeks, like you need, you want a hot bath, okay? We, we become accustomed to these things. Like I'm justifying not having hot water. How to build a smokehouse. These could be great for like father and son projects kind of things. DIY stove made from used tire rims. Okay, boo. DIY air conditioner. Yes, we're definitely going to need that. Uh, fly trap thing. Automatic traps for animals. Maybe don't do that. Okay, I'm intrigued by this one. Meal in a bag, hamburger gravy and mashed potatoes. I don't know about that, friends. But an emergency. So there's projects on food, how to make 2,400 calorie emergency rations. Projects related to electricity. So it's all broken up by section. That's cool. Yeah, I know my husband and boys will love working through some of these projects. So I just thought this would be great, especially if you've got a tinkering kind of kid or a tinkering kind of husband. This could be great for like units, summer projects, just things. When people, when kids are like, I'm bored, go make something, kid. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I'm almost like certain I'm forgetting something, but I don't know what it is or where it is. Otherwise I would show you. So I'll link everything down below. And like I said, be sure to check out my Amazon storefront for homeschool. Um, I really have been like working hard to sort that and get it all like squared away. i been homeschooling for a really, really long time at this point. And sometimes I forget, like on phases I'm already through, I'm kind of going back and going, okay, when my kids were in this grade or this age or this thing, what were we liking? So I'm trying to like pull from even the archives of my own brain to make sure that those lists are really, really robust for you. And um, especially just like with books and manipulatives and resources and stuff for creating your own units and things. So definitely check that out. Uh, but that's it for me today, y'all. I've enjoyed spending this little bit of time with you, uh, and I will see you again very soon. Bye.